What I'm going to do now is just try to get rid of this cortex. I'm going to zigzag. I have to be careful because even if it's this thick, it can still snap in half. When I'm not sure what to do, I just do something else <laughs> so I can figure it out. <clears throat> I don't know whether I should come at it from this way or that way. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the indirect percussion tool because I can be more accurate. And I feel safer using that tool to do the uh, thinning on the ends. It's still a primary biface. But after this grinding and after this next pass, it'll start being the uh, secondary biface. through these steps again and repeating this again because it, it took me a while to learn the different stages and uh, showing it one time uh, it probably won't sink in I watch these videos myself too just to review what I do so uh, this will benefit me as well as you guys It's still a primary biface. It's been ground. Uh, there's some platforms developing that I could take advantage of, and that's what I'm going to do now. Get rid of that big lump first. Now I've got two sizes of these mallets. This size this size. I'm going to switch over to this longer one because when I strike the velocity on this end is a lot more than the smaller one. And I can generate more power without too much more force as far as uh, muscle force. I'm depending on the velocity of this end to uh, create a stronger strike. works very well. I attempt a long thinning flake. I didn't go very far.
tip another long one here. <clears throat> time try to send it as far as I can well I hit that really hard but it didn't go very very far let's see I'm going to grind it again and then switch back over to the smaller mallet. Grinding in, shaping. Okay, I'll consider this a secondary biface. There's some large flake removals on both sides. The edges are ground for another thinning pass. But I don't want it to get too much thinner than this. because this is rather long in comparison to the previous one and when I do the fluting on this there's a lot more bending stress so I, I need more thickness in the middle I always have to keep in mind that proportion of length and width to thickness because of the stresses that I put on the ends of the piece Okay. This is now a secondary biface. There's no cortex. Very prominent flake removals. Okay. I can reduce this with hammerstone as well. But hammerstone requires a lot more skill. So I could do that with the indirect percussion flaker or a hammerstone. Same shape of flake and everything. Just the uh, the way it looks after I strike the platform is different when I use a hammerstone. There's a wider uh, I don't know what you would call that a crater from the hammerstone than there is from the indirect tool. Hammerstone, there's a, there's a little bit of luck involved in getting it just right. Let's see if I can do this one. Yeah, see, I'm crushing it too much already. I don't want to strike it again. Let's try it here. The impact was right there, and you can see how it fans out quickly. But now I'm going to have to be more precise, so I could either use a smaller end of the hammer stone to hit more precisely, or use the indirect tool. I'll just use the indirect tool for the video. Uh, 
there's a step fracture starting there, so I've got to be careful. Because if, sometimes when you hit next to a step fracture, the second attempt also steps right there in the same area. It takes time to get used to uh, what, where or how far you, you need to be away from the original step. Again, these flakes can be removed with antler or hammer stone. I just prefer to use the uh, copper in for the video because it's easier for me. But I will make some videos soon, strictly ABO, because I do want to learn that all the techniques involved with ABO flint napping, especially Clovis, because so many other designs developed from Clovis. And obviously the the tools carried over to the other designs as well. I believe the same tools for the early archaics were the same were the tools that clothes snappers used. Still a secondary biface. Uh, it needs to be a lot thinner and more narrow to be a preform. And I use the term preform kind of uh, freely. Um, I think in the last video I said preform when I meant to say spall in the very beginning. Like this is a spall. Anyway, um, I've got to be more clear. The, there's a difference between a preform and a spall and a primary biface, secondary biface. I want to make sure I get those right. I'm being careful to make this biface lenticular. to not create steps on the surface. I'm just dressing it right now, uh, preparing it for larger flake removals on the next pass. I cannot do large flake removals if it's too irregular like this. The flakes travel much better when the surface is smoother and more regular. Could measure the width, width to thickness ratio, and keep it consistent. But uh, I just eyeball it. It should be around three to one all through this process, from the secondary biface down to the, to the uh, preform. It should be about uh, three to one thickness to width ratio, and then after the uh, 
after the biface is completed, then we go down to like four to one thickness to width ratio. I just finished watching a video on Salutrian technology and Salutrian was pointed at both ends and uh, there's a lot of discussion on whether Salutrian is related or if Clovis is related, related to uh, Salutrian technology um, but I won't add to that I just wanted to kind of bring that out that they are very similar at this stage But once it gets past the uh, secondary biface stage, Clovis stops looking like Salutrian, in my opinion. Okay, I'm kind of cheating right now because I'm, I'm doing long flake removals to thin out some areas. Uh, but I, what I should do is I just should concentrate on dressing the edge. It's a habit of mine with my archaic style points. Uh, and that in those styles, the thinning and the, the shaping is all done at the same time. But with Clovis, there are two distinctive operations, shaping the contour, shaping the edge, and thinning the biface. They're two different, um, two different procedures. Whereas later on, the thinning and the shaping, sometimes even the notching, uh, helps to thin the point. So they do a lot of things at the same time. But this one, let me just finish dressing the edge, and then we can, then I can start with the larger flake removals trying to get some overshots So what I'm going to do now is just dress the edge and not worry about the thickness in the middle. I may try to take out some of these steps, but I sh I'm just going to leave this thickness intact. So I'm going to switch over to a smaller diameter for smaller flakes and just dress the edge.
this is going to be the base on this side. I'm going to bevel it up this way so I can send some thinning flakes to remove these steps. When I do the next pass, And when I'm dressing the edge, I'm being very careful not to create any step fractures at all. And remove any that I, I can from near the edge. Okay, so when I grind this, it'll help to dress the edge some more. Because as I grind back and forth, as I grind back and forth, it, it flakes off small flakes in both directions uh, where the high spots are. And it helps to uh, even out the edge. Showing up dark or, or not. I know it's a little out of focus because I'm too far away, but the sunlight has a tendency to uh, mess with the with the camera, and the lighting is not always good. I need to send some flakes this way, thinning flakes. To remember which way I'm beveling. And dragging it across the uh, braiding stone can bevel also. I think you can see that bevel. Now sometimes that bevel was also on the sides. You can drag, you can drag it in one direction and create a bevel on the sides as well. But I usually don't do that, but the base I do. The bevel just makes it easier to run a flake with less effort. And you don't want to put a lot of force at the end of the at the end of the blade. Okay. And I'm not going to take really deep flakes because it'll put too much strain on this. Bye face. Hold gripping it hard. I cleared off a lot of those steps. I'm not putting much force at all into it. Not much at all. 
and as long as the uh, surface is prepared well it doesn't require much force to drive these long flakes the thing you have to watch out for is if you don't support it that flake can dive into the point produce a reverse hinge and it, it will be broken in half so that's pretty much the ending of the uh, secondary biface stage at this point I think I believe a lot of the Clovis uh, nappers heat treated the stone at this point before going on to developing the preform so I would consider this the end stage or the ending point for the secondary biface you can carry this with you the edges are ground it's not very sharp it won't cut through the container that it's being held in and uh, easy to heat treat and you can you can pretty much tell if the stone is going to be good for napping once you get to this point and this one is still very good it's this is the interior of the stone but it's still very good quality it's not quite as good as the exterior this exterior near the cortex flakes very well but it still appears to be flaking quite well so uh, I'm going to go on to the next stage here switch to uh, well I might not switch to a smaller diameter yet I still do, do need to uh, try to get an overshot flake or two okay I'm just strengthening the edge for these uh, potential overshot flakes. We'll see how it goes. We got some hinging going on here. I'm going to avoid that area for now until I until I thin this down here. I'm going to try for a wide flake across this bump. Let's go with a longer mallet. More force. The fact that that platform is not crushing is a good sign. Not quite overshot, but it's pretty good. Let's see. I'll try for another one across here. I'm not sure how they fit together, but that almost went all the way across as well. Attempt another through here. I've got some concrete here on the edge, so I'm going to choose my spot very carefully. I'm trying to chip off as much of that concrete on the edge as I can. Then I'll grind it again. Okay. 
previous flake was here. I'm going to go right about there to get this next flake off. A little bit higher. This this area looks stronger than that area. This looks stronger than that. So. Didn't quite go all the way. Nice wide flake though. I can come back from the other side and get that hinge. And I think that's what they call collateral flaking. One flake here, then one flake on the opposite side. And it looks like I cut myself through the uh, through the tape, so I'm going to take a break here. <laughs>